Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna work on this integral and we're gonna solve it using Laplace transforms. Now to start, notice that the given integral is the same as twice the integral from zero to infinity of uh, sine squared x over x squared dx. And this is so because the function sine squared x over x squared is an even function. So it's symmetric about the y. And so like we could just do the integral from zero to infinity and double it and it'll be the same as this. Now, without this two there, I already showed you how to solve this integral in a different video using a really cool clever method, yeah? Uh, but here, as I said, we're gonna use Laplace transforms. Uh, to start, uh, let's define uh, i of t to be uh, the integral from zero to infinity, and let's write the two there also, and then sine squared of xt uh, divided by x squared times dx. Notice that i of one is the integral we're trying to find the answer to. So this here is i of one, because uh, if t is one, then that'll be just x as an argument of sine squared and so we'll have exactly what we have there okay cool uh, but from here let's consider the laplace transform of i of t right which by definition is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times i of t dt right this here is the laplace transform of i of t where i of t again is this fella okay cool but then that means that this Laplace transform of um, i of t is equal to um, integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st. And we know i of t is right here. So I'll write the 2 in front of this integral. But the rest of i of t is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of um, sine squared um, of xt uh, divided by x squared uh, times dx, uh, but we're doing the Laplace transform of i of t, so I need a dt right here. Yeah? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now, um, what we're going to do is first notice that as far as uh, integrating uh, with respect to x, um, e to the minus st is a constant, meaning I could throw e to the minus st inside of this second integral. So let's do that right now. So we go, all right, so uh, 0 to infinity here, e to the minus st right there, yeah? OK, cool. Um, and then uh, our next step is going to be um, using Fubini's theorem, we're going to swap the order of integration. So uh, the Laplace transform of i of t is going to equal, uh, and I'm not going to write L of i of t in the interest of space, but yeah, it's going to equal two times, and I'm going to swap the order of integration, but it's not going to look like I did to start because the limits are the same, right? And then what I want is a dt leading, right? So I, I'll write, um, well, um, yeah, I, I, I won't do two things at once, so let me just do what I said. Um, so uh, sine um, squared of xt divided by x squared, and what I want is dt dx instead of dx dt at the end, right? Okay, cool. Now, since we're integrating with respect to t first, 1 over x squared is a constant, meaning I can write it in front of this uh, inner integral. So if I make a little bit of space, I could write uh, 2 integral 0 to infinity. And what I'm saying is I could write 1 over x squared right here. So ask to get rid of this denominator. Yeah? OK. All right. Uh, so where to from here? Well. Notice now, then, that what I have here, specifically exactly this here, with the dt end, is a Laplace transform of sine squared of xt. So what I just boxed right here is uh, Laplace transform of uh, sine squared of xt. Yeah? OK, but the Laplace transform of sine squared of xt is equal to uh, 2x squared divided by s times s squared um, s times s squared plus 4x squared so uh, you can do it more carefully uh, but yeah the Laplace transform of and it's long right the Laplace transform of sine squared of xt is equal to this 
So what that means is we can replace what's boxed here with this here. Cool. Um, so all right, all right, all right. Um, so, 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 uh, we have two times integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared. And then um, we have, in place of what's boxed, 2x squared over um, s times uh, s squared plus 4x squared and then just the dx, right? Okay, cool. Now, uh, first, right? So no need for this. Next, right? Okay, and why was I able to take out um, the one over s that was right here? Well, because I'm integrating with respect to x, so s is a constant, yeah? All right, so where to from here, All right? Okay, so um, this is fairly straightforward after this. So we have one over s integral zero to infinity, and this is looking like tan inverse, uh, but to claim it um, as such, let's first do this, which is here in this denominator, factor out an s squared, and so we're gonna write one and then plus and then we have to write 4x squared, but we have to make up for factoring out an s squared that wasn't there in this part. So the way we make up for it is by writing that, right? Okay? And then dx. Now, 1 over s squared here, <laughs> like sweat is like trickling down my left eye. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, so, so um, we have this, right? And um, this here, right, like is 2x divided by s o squared, right? This here. So 2x divided by s o squared, right? Okay, 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 okay. All right, um, so, 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 so where? Well, over here. <laughs> um, 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 so, four over the last um was um not um like um intentional. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so, 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 like, what's this? This is tan inverse of. It's tan inverse of um two uh, x over s. Um, but if you take the derivative of 10 inverse of 2x over s, chain rule requires that we multiply by the derivative of 2x over s, which is 2 over s. So basically, in the anti-differentiation, you can do u substitution where you let u equal 2x over s, but you should find that uh, this is not the antiderivative of this guy exactly. We need to make up uh, by um, that constant you would have to multiply by if you were taking the derivative and that's um, to make up for that we have to write s over 2. Basically basically do this carefully if you'd like but 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 I'm right. Um, so 0 to infinity right here yeah? All right so 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 what? So so this. Uh, the 2 there and the 4 there that turns into a 2. Uh, an s here takes care of an s here. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so we have um, 2 over s squared tan inverse of um, <laughs> tan inverse of 2x over s uh, evaluated on 0 to infinity. Now, if you plug in infinity, tan inverse uh, is going to add infinity because that's what you're going to get if you plug in infinity for x here. Tan inverse of infinity is pi over 2. Um, tan inverse asymptotically approaches pi over 2 as x goes to forever. Okay, and if you plug in 0, tan inverse of 0 is 0. So, what I is saying is, um, what I is saying is that basically this here, after the evaluation, is going to turn out to be 2 over s squared. Um, and then, yeah, the infinity part is going to give us um, a pi over 2. And the zero part is going to give us a zero, as I've already said. So you can do this. And so we have pi over s squared. Now look here. Pi over s squared is the result of the Laplace transform of i of t, right? That's what we embarked on when this journey started. OK, and, um, and uh, so this is pi um, over s squared, right? Now if I do inverse Laplace transform of both sides, then I'd have to do on the right side the uh, inverse Laplace transform of um, 
pi over s squared. And uh, not a front C there. And um, the pi we can take out and write in front um, like that. And so 1 over s squared, inverse Laplace transform, that's just t. So um, pi t is what we get on the right side. Uh, on the left side, clearly, the inverse Laplace and the Laplace cancel, and so we just get i of t. Ah, so i of t is equal to pi times t, right? And what we said was that the integral we were looking to solve uh, once we like, yeah, yeah, you get it. We went 0 to infinity and a 2 there. That integral is just i of 1. Well, that integral is the same as this integral. And i of 1, therefore, is the answer to uh, that integral. And it is equal to pi times 1, or pi. Bye.